This is Beth Benko, and I've been doing family history research for about 10 years or so now. I thought it was time that I share some of my findings with my family. So here goes. I'm going to divide this up so that I look at my maternal grandparents first, and in particular my maternal grandfather's ancestors. So here are Grandpa Ulrich's ancestors. The ones that are outlined in red are the immigrant ancestors, at least as far as I've been able to determine. If we take a look at Grandpa Ulrich's death certificate, we'll see that the informant for the personal information is Arthur N. Ulrich, otherwise known as Uncle Art. Um, he gives his grandfather's name as John Ulrich and his grandmother's name as Elizabeth Vanderhorst. I believe that uh, Grandpa Ulrich's father's name was Joseph rather than John. Uh, you'll see that birth date of August 13th, 1897 agrees with um, our family knowledge as well as the death date of September 8th, 1964. So let's take a look at Joseph F. Ulrich. Uh, here's a little summary of his life. He was born the 15th of April, 1870, in Germany or Austria. Now, the country that we know as Germany today really wasn't formed until about 1872, but there were several German-speaking regions within Europe, and that's likely where he came from. We believe he immigrated about 1885, in 1891, he married Maria Elizabeth Vanderhorst. He was naturalized in 1897, and he died on March the 23rd, 1913, of pneumonia and heart failure. He's buried in St. Mary's Cemetery in Cincinnati. Here are some of the records that I found on him. This is the civil marriage record for Joseph F. Ulrich and Lizzie Vonderhorst. They applied for uh, the marriage license on the 20th of October, 1891, and they were married the following day by the Catholic clergyman, Reverend Gregory Fongman, in St. John's Church in the city of Cincinnati. Here's the record that I obtained from the church. Here we see that Joseph's name is spelled Oldrick, which is not quite the spelling that's been passed down. Uh, his father was Joseph Oldrick and his mother, Anna von Schurer. This plus sign in front of the elder Joseph's name indicates that he has passed away by this time. The bride is Elizabeth von der Horst her father, Johann von der Horst, and her mother, Teresa Rua, and they are from Minster, Ohio. Continuing on to the second page of the church marriage register, we see that the bridegroom is a baker. He's 21 years old, and he's living at Findlay and Race Streets in Cincinnati. The bride does not have an occupation. She's 27 years old, and uh, she lived at number 25 Western Avenue. Neither of them has been married before, and they are both parishioners at St. John's. Now, St. John's, or St. John the Baptist Church, uh, is an old church, uh, was an old church in Cincinnati. It closed in 1969. Uh, the present day St. John the Baptist Church is outside of the city in Coleraine Township, so don't get confused with that church. This is Joseph's naturalization record. He was naturalized on the 1st of, of April, 1897. One interesting thing to note here is his character reference, a man named Henry Railing. Henry might be someone uh, worthwhile researching just to find out what his connection was to Joseph. Were they close friends? I 
don't know that he was a relative, um, but it would just be nice to know more about him. In 1900, uh, Joseph and his family are residing in the city of Cincinnati. They are on uh, Woodward Avenue. We see that here on the left-hand side. They're down here at number 223. So there are multiple families at that address. So there's the Ulrichs, and I'll blow that up. Joseph Ulrich is the head of the household. Uh, he's a white male, born on April, in April of 1870. He's 30 years old, and he's been married for eight years. He was born in Germany. His parents were born in Germany. He immigrated in 1885. He's been in the U.S. for 15 years. He's naturalized, and he's a baker. Um, he's working on his own account and he's able to read and write. He's renting his home. His wife Elizabeth says that her birthday is August 1864. Um, not sure if it's 64 or 63 or 65. Uh, we'll see a variety of different dates for, for her birth date. At this point she says she's 35, five years older than her husband, uh, on the church marriage record, she was six years older than, than Joseph. Uh, she too has been married for eight years. She has born five children and four of them are living. She was born in Ohio. Her parents were born in Germany and she is literate as well. Uh, first daughter is Emma, born in April of 1893, who's seven and she's attending school. And then there's Josephine, age five. Arthur, my grandfather, born in August of 1897, who's two years old now. So this is consistent with um, other information that we have on Arthur. And Marie is the youngest child. She's just one month old, born in April of 1900. nineteen ten. The family has moved to East Thirteenth Street at number five thirteen. So again we have the same six people. Uh, Joseph now tells us that he's been married for 18 years and that he came from Austria and not Germany. Uh, but he speaks German and his parents were German speaking Austrians as well. Um, immigrated in 1885. He speaks English. He's a baker in a bakery. So uh, very consistent with the information we had in the 1900 census. Elizabeth, his wife, is 45. Um, married for 18 years. Again, we see five children, four of them living. I don't know of any family stories that, that tell us who this who this missing child may be, um, probably some a baby that died very young or, or was stillborn. Uh, the oldest daughter here is Amelia and not and not Emma. Uh, so I don't know if Emma was a nickname possibly for Amelia. Uh, she's 17 and single. She's working as a tailoress in a tailor shop. Josephine, age 14, is working as a cementer in a shoe factory. Arthur, age 12, is apparently in school. Yes, he's in school, as is Marie. So she's nine years old and in school. Okay, that was 1910, and Joseph passed away then in 1913, on March the 23rd, 1913. His death certificate gives his date of birth as April 15th. Of course, that's 1870. Uh, he's a baker in a bake shop. Uh, his father was Joseph Ulrich, and his mother was Anna von Schuler. So here we see uh, it's spelled U-L-L-E-R and not U-R-A. 
as it was on the marriage record. So a little discrepancy there, I'm not sure what his mother's maiden name was. Uh, Joseph died of pneumonia and heart failure. Um, he was living at 513 East 13th Street still. Uh, the undertaker was nearby at 502 East 13th Street. This is a uh, funeral card that was given to the mourners at his funeral. I obtained this from another researcher who found it in her aunt's collection of various funeral cards and such, and she was kind enough to give me a copy of it. Uh, you can see that they were clearly part of a German-speaking neighborhood. One side of the card is in German and the other side is in English. Newspapers of the day in Cincinnati, uh, particularly in the German-speaking neighborhoods, were written in German. So here is a copy of Joseph's death announcement, which I have translated for you. Um, it says at the age of 42, he died on the 23rd of March at 4.20 in the morning. He was the beloved husband of Elizabeth Ulrich, who was born of von der Horst. Funeral will take place Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. from their apartment, uh, number 513 East 13th Street, with a Requiem High Mass at St. Mary's Church. An obituary for Joseph was also in the newspaper in Minster, Ohio. Minster was the hometown of his wife, Elizabeth. So here we have uh, what made the paper in Minster. Uh, says that Joseph died in his home on Sunday and the burial will be in Cincinnati on Wednesday. He was a baker and he had been a master baker in Cincinnati for many years. He was born in Germany, came to America in his younger years. He leaves behind his wife Elizabeth, Nee Vanderhorst, and daughter of long deceased John Vanderhorst, who formerly lived at the house on North Main Street and is now occupied by another man and his family. The story in Minster was all about the Vonderhorst family and, and the connection there. Uh, so Mrs. Elizabeth Ulrich is a sister of Mrs. Bernard Sager, southwest of the city, and Miss Ben Clute of New Bremen. Mrs. Clute and Mr. Sager wanted to attend the burial, but precisely because of the high water, the trains were diverted. Now, um, it's interesting to note that um, there was a catastrophic flood in Ohio at this time caused by spring runoff and unusually heavy rain from March the 23rd through the 26th. The 23rd Sunday was the day that Joseph died and there was rain in Western Ohio for the next three or four days. The great, this great flood of 1913 may not have contributed to Joseph's death, but it certainly inconvenienced the mourners as some people were not able to get down to Cincinnati because the trains were not running. Here is the tombstone of Joseph and Elizabeth Ulrich in St. Mary's Cemetery. And here you'll note that Elizabeth's birth year is 1865. Um, even though it's carved in stone. This may not be accurate. I really think she was born in 63. Uh, she may not have wanted, or she may wanted to have de-emphasized the difference in age between herself and her husband. And so perhaps she fibbed about her age. Okay, Joseph Ulrich's parents. The church marriage record names his parents as Joseph Oldrich and Anna Ranshura. His death certificate states that his parents were Joseph Ulrich and Anna von Schula. So I'm not quite sure uh, what his, maiden, his mother's maiden name was. Uh, no U.S. records have been found for his parents, so they likely stayed in the old country. Okay, Joseph's origin. Uh, his naturalization document says he was a native of Austria. 
The image of his funeral card was obtained from another researcher who believed that Joseph might have come from the same village as her ancestor, that is, Selne, in, formerly in Austria, now the Czech Republic. And here is a map that shows you where that, where that town is um, on today's map. So in the corner of the Czech Republic, uh, really right on the Polish border. That may or may not be where he came from, but that's our best guess at this point. This has been a look at Grandpa Ulrich's paternal ancestors. In the next video, we'll take a look at his mother and her ancestors. So this has been Beth Wyland Benko telling you about our Ulrich ancestors. Please leave me comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Next up, we'll be talking about the Vanderhorst family and then the Hubers. So stay tuned.